In this video, we finish the modeling of the flower by adding a blossom to it. The blossom consists of two more nodes, one for the stamp and one for the petals. Let's start with the stamp. The stamp has a spherical shape, so we need a node that both creates a sphere and that can place other things on its surface. This node is the urchin node, so let's add one to the scene. The node was automatically connected to our stock transition. That's fine, but the placement is incorrect. We need to correct this by going to the new urchin tab in the stock transition node. We need to change the placement to tip of the segment and reset the angle so that our sphere sits right on top. Next, let's go back to the urchin node and add some slight variation to the urchin size. We also need to squash the urchin, so let's use a value of 0 0.5 for z, so that the sphere is now only half as tall. We also need to move the sphere a little down, so I think a value of minus 0.25 looks good. Next, let's add a new material for the stamp. Just as before, we will switch this material to a PBR material and call this stamp. And we need to change this to a map picture and load the color texture for the stamp. Now let me turn off the highlighting so that we can see the texture better. Our texture is pretty flat but Plant Factory uses a spherical projection for the texture, which causes distortion. So we need to set this to flat vertical inside the material to correct this. Even though the OpenGL view does not change, when we do a render, we can see that the mapping of the texture is now correct and that it's mapped flat from the top. So let's go back into the material and do the same for all the other slots so let's add the normal and again for the metalness we'll be using the same black picture that we used before and let's repeat the process for the roughness and for the ambient occlusion as well and we need to go back and set each picture to flat vertical as the mapping mode And let's click OK. And our texture is done. Let's take a better look at the plant again. Yes, that looks fine. OK, so next we are going to add an advanced segment. And this is going to be our petal. And I'll call this Petals. And let's rename the urchin to Stamp. And this time we will be using the blades option that we talked about before in the previous video. So let's check the blades group. And this will add blades to our plant. First we need to get rid of the cylinder, so let's set the radius to user defined. And set the radius to zero, so now we're left with only the plane that the blades option creates. And we also have a lot of polygons here, so let's unsubdivide the plant a couple of times. And then we can change the length to something more reasonable, for example, 3 plus minus 0.2. And now let's change the option for the blade handling to full width, which means that the width that we're using now is the width of the entire blade and not only of half of the blade. I think 0 0.45 plus minus a variation of 0 0.05 is fine. Next, let's create a new material for our blades. And let's switch that one again to the PBR material and call it Petal. And once more, we'll be loading all the corresponding pictures into the right slots. You will notice that the 
pictures do not have an alpha map in this case because we will use the blades option in just a moment to model the petals with real 3D geometry. And finally, let's add the ambient occlusion map. And let's also add some backlight, which will be important for rendering the plant later on our favorite software. Let's click OK. Now let's go back to the stamp node. And by default, all blades are distributed orthogonal. And that's not the right option for this plant. So let's turn this off. And I would also like to adjust the ending point for our blades. So the end is the height where our petals are placed. And we can see that they don't have the right orientation. So we need to rotate them around C by 90 degrees to make them parallel to our stalk transition. And next, let's go back to the blades and activate a local bias and add some curl to our blades. It's important that we use a local curl because else all the blades will bend into the same direction. So let's use a curl of minus one along the y-axis and let's add some strength variation of 0.25. Let's add some more subdivisions so that we get a rounder stamp and that's fine. Okay, so we're back now on the stamp tab and we'll add some more instances. I think 50 is good for our case. And now that we have the curl, we can go and adjust the growth angle of our petals. And I'm ending up with something around 35 degrees and let's add some variation plus minus eight. And that looks good to me. Now we have a nice petal distribution around our stamp. And let's also add some scale variation, plus minus 0.1 maybe. And then let's go back to our petals. And now we'll be using this profile filter curve to change the outer shape of our blade. Currently it looks like a sheet of paper, so we need to make this a round shape. So let's first move all the points down and then let's change them to a rounded curve. And now we can see that with the blades, this is the reason why the leaf or petal shape has to be symmetrical to make this option work. But for our petals, this is indeed the perfect way to create them. So the symmetrical shape lends itself perfectly to using the blade option. Our blade is still a little flat, so let's add some more 3D depth to it by using the section filter. So again, let's edit the filter and change this to a smooth curve. And let's add a new control point, maybe around here. And you can see when I move that point that we get a smooth line. And that's not what we want because we want to have a sharper dip in the middle. So let's uncheck smooth joint and now we can move both sides of the tangents independently and create a better shape. And since we rotated the blades 90 degrees along Z, we need to mirror our filter. So let's do a right click and flip the axes. And now we have the correct 3D shape. And with the section height filter, we can now reduce the influence of that filter so that the blades get a more realistic look. So let's take a look at our flower again and create a couple more variations to see if they look right or not, but in my opinion they do. And we can also see that there's no intersection between a blossom and the main stalk because of the axis repeller that we used in one of the previous lessons. 
which forces the blossom to grow away from the plant. In the next lesson, we will add wind to our flower.